I'm wary of talking about myself as though I've found the answers and am now grounded. <laughs> um, but I do think that I've found the answers and I'm very, no. I started writing the songs for Garden View about three years ago and the bulk of them were written during the pandemic. I felt like there was something that I needed to express that wasn't pomplumous. And when I start writing a song that feels like a Natalie Dawn song, it's usually because it's coming from a place of introspection and struggle. And then I'm like, Pumpaloo's fans don't want this. They don't want me working through my shit. I'm at this point of just kind of like, yes, that's all there and it's okay. This is just how vast life is and how small we are and the preciousness of small things. That's something that I touch on lyrically, but also I feel like sonically. You have these really wide reverb spaces. And then this very small, intimate voice and guitar line at the center. And I really enjoy that contrast. I wasn't born in the I was staring out my window at the garden a lot. Uh, my neighbor's garden, our garden, that was my, my world for the few years that I was writing these songs. Just sort of sitting with a guitar and going to songwriting just to express something. I wrote the songs on my own. I knew that what I needed to do next was to have a communal recording experience. Hey Ross. What? We're here in Eagle Rock. Let me do it again. <laughs> We're here at 64 Sound in Los Angeles, California. We've spent the last eight days here making a record. We went into the studio almost exactly a year ago. It felt like such a gift. This is what life is about. I've missed it. John and Ross. They're both weirdly talented people. They just have a great sense of humor. We spent like most of the time in the studio just kind of goofing around. Okay, is there like a like a nice dark warm shaker? Like oaky, okay, buttery, you know, fruit drink forward shaker. shaker. Back to the booth. Here we go. All right, our work here is done. Even though they're wildly talented, they were trying to not overwhelm it with too much stuff. So the record has just a lot of space and a lot of really minimal choices. John and Ross and Ellie and Crane and Caleb and all of these people. I'm so happy with the, the way that they crafted it. Just pure talent, really. We only work with the best, and back we for only you. are the best. Who are you? <laughs> Why am I watching this video? <laughs> I feel like Garden View is probably the town where Adam and Eve settled right after getting booted from the garden. I like the idea that you could live in this very pleasant town, but the implications are that you have been cursed and like pushed away from God. But you still have a pretty nice view of the garden, so there's that. Have you heard that the rapture is coming? When I think about songs like Have You Heard, it is a total acceptance of being raised in the church, of singing these songs communally. I loved that feeling. So writing that hymn, I think of it as like Bible fan fiction. I'm gonna tell the story that I wish that I had been raised with. The story of not divine conditional love, but divine unconditional love, divine acceptance. I was raised with the belief that you had a purpose, you were here for a reason, there were answers, 
that all you had to do was live in faith and follow a certain amount of guidelines and then that you were you were good it's still something where i find myself looking for the right way to approach something the right way to be and it's very comforting to believe that you found the right way but you're always wrong but there is a it's okay So much of my life I've suppressed that that's something that I crave. Some sort of closeness with something bigger out there. I can acknowledge the existence of something else without having to put a label on it, without having to know. I think that this record was an expression of that acceptance of not knowing that acceptance of many feelings existing at the same time, many truths existing at the same time, and trying to not figure it out, to just let it, just let it be. It's good that you know yourself. I mean, I don't know what to do about myself. <laughs> None of us do. The pandemic had this way of really making you evaluate your priorities and then that happened again on another level. A few weeks ago, I found out that I've got a little bit of skin cancer on the tip of my nose. It's not life-threatening. We caught it super early. The doctor told me that I shouldn't wait longer than three months to have surgery on my nose. And I'd seen some surgeries where it affected the sinuses. I decided that we were just gonna go into the studio and do it all within the span of a week and to get all of these songs done. That drove us towards a lot of clarity. Everyone felt the preciousness of the moment of like, this is it, these are like, these are the days. It's gonna be something that we look back on and celebrate for, I think, for a really long time. That was it for me. Yeah, I felt great. <laughs> I want people to feel whatever they're feeling. I just want people to feel. Parachute works! <laughs> if you're looking for answers, she'll just leave you her number.